exposing my parents when they forgot to invite me to their wedding. I-17F was recently forgotten about on the day of my parents' wedding. My parents have been together for about 25 years, but they never actually got married. That's why when my dad, 50M, proposed to my mother, 49F, on their anniversary, which they have always celebrated on the date my mother found out she was pregnant with my eldest sister, even though they were already together before, everyone, including me, was elated and celebrated the occasion with great joy. This happened all the way back in February. They immediately jumped into wedding planning, deciding very early on on a small event in Hawaii with just the closest family and friends for an intimate ceremony. Almost immediately my mother asked my sister, 25F, to be her maid of honor, and my dad asked my brother, 22M, to be his groomsman. I wasn't surprised or offended by this, my sister had always been a mommy's girl, and they both enjoyed spending time with each other shopping and socializing, so they had a very close bond, and the same goes for my father and brother, they always played football together and messed around with cars, my father even trained my brother's team for a while in middle school. That had always left me as the odd one out. I tried to insert myself into my family's hobbies and groups that they had within our home, but was always rebuffed. Maybe they could sense that my interest in their activities wasn't all that genuine, or maybe they just didn't care. Either way, I was used to being the last and least important member of my family. Mom had a sister and dad had a brother, my parents had each other, and my two siblings were closer to each other than they ever were to me, leaving me very lonely and isolated in my own home. During the preparation for the wedding, initially it was suggested that I be the flower girl, but my sister thought that role would be more appropriate for her daughter, 3F, so that idea was quickly tossed away. Later on, my maternal grandmother suggested that I might read a poem or do a little bit of a speech during the ceremony, but both my parents refused because they wanted the wedding to be low-key, and they didn't think a cheesy and sappy speech would fit their vision, their literal words. I was still okay with all of this, even though it hurt to know I would be the only member of the family to not actually be part of the wedding party or have any role at all on the day. As the day approached, my parents and siblings got more and more caught up on all the wedding planning. I noticed my mom didn't invite me dress shopping and that whenever they would have discussions about the venue or the event I was left out, so I decided to see if they would realize that I wasn't being involved at all and kept quiet, waiting for them to ask me something, anything, about the wedding, but that never happened. The wedding was set for three weeks ago the end of August. The day before the departure, my mother casually asked if I had my luggage ready because we couldn't be late to the airport. I bluntly told her that I hadn't prepared anything. She got confused for a second and then snapped at me for not being prepared. I then asked her if I even had a ticket and her face went pale. Yep, they hadn't even bought me a ticket, and I'm not even sure if I had a room or any accommodations once there. Even though I was the only person in my family without a stable income, I work as a part-time babysitter, my parents had bought first-class tickets for my siblings and the couple other friends that were attending the wedding but had forgotten me. My mom told me not to make a big deal out of it and that they can just find me a low-cost ticket last minute from a cheap airline, but I just replied by asking her, then what? Do I even have a dress for the ceremony? She went with sis to buy hers and all the other female guests months ago, but I wasn't included. That's when my father came in and just told me to suck it up and that I've never been a girly girl so I could just wear whatever. I got mad at this because, even though I'm not the most feminine girl on the planet, I would have loved to be included in such an important part of my parents' wedding, and it was about the fact that I was excluded for literally everything that had been going on for months. We all got into a fight with them, calling me entitled and accusing me of making myself small intentionally so they would forget me like that is a valid excuse for ignoring a child. They ended up telling me that if I was going to keep this attitude, I might as well skip the whole thing altogether, to which I responded with a defiant fine and went to my room. Next morning they all left for Hawaii without me. The ceremony was really small, but they all posted loads of pictures on Instagram and Facebook about how perfect and magical that whole week was being. People realized quickly that I wasn't in any of the photos and asked my parents why, to which they replied that unfortunately I had caught COVID before the trip and had to stay behind. My blood boiled at this. I don't know why this was the straw that broke the camel back for me, but it was. I decided to take a COVID test and published a picture of myself holding the negative test and captioned it not sick at all, just forgotten. I tagged everyone that had questioned my absence from the trip and the wedding in the picture and, for good measure, also every person invited to it. I also wrote in the comments about how my parents had literally forgotten about anything to do with me until the day before parting and how they actually uninvited me. Most people were on my side, and others couldn't believe it and thought there must be something more to the story than what I was saying, but one thing is for certain, I completely ruined my parents' wedding, and their day was overshadowed by my confession. At first I felt quite satisfied with myself for standing up on my own, but after a barrage of messages from my family calling me every name in the book and later, when they came back, them furiously attacking me for my immature actions and my spoiled behavior, my pride deflated quickly, and I began to feel awful. I hate my family, and I hate being in this house, but I'm a minor and can't leave just yet. I do feel like I could have handled the situation better though, and now I feel so depressed that I'm second-guessing everything I did, from not speaking up before to the way I exposed them. I also feel guilty for the lack of connection between all of my family and me, and maybe I could have done more. Update. A few days ago I could barely find the energy to get out of bed, and my family's comments had made me really believe that I was guilty for all that had passed, but after seeing the responses to my post and all the support you guys were giving me, I felt somewhat reaffirmed in my actions and feelings towards my family. I'm still fighting the feelings of guilt and depression, but whenever I start to spiral, I think about how much this community of strangers has had my back, and I try to calm myself down with your words. I finally decided to call my grandma and tell her the full story. Just to clarify a point before going on, I said this in the comments, but I feel like I should put it here also. My grandma 77F did not attend the wedding. She lives several states away and has mobility issues so she doesn't travel anymore. We went to visit her around Easter, and that's when she commented that I might read a poem at the ceremony, but that was the last time I saw her in person before all this. 
She's always been very loving to me and has called out my parents in the past for their favoritism, but it is hard for her to play a more active role in my upbringing since she lives so far, and I am always worried about bothering her due to her age and health condition, she had a minor stroke a few years back and is now back to normal, but I still worry. Anyway, I called her and laid out everything that had happened with the wedding and how my parents didn't even buy me a ticket to go with them. She came to the same conclusion that most commenters did when I told her that it was simply impossible that they had forgotten and that they did it on purpose. I cried on the phone with her, laying out how I was feeling, how this has been going on forever, how I feel in the aftermath, and most importantly, about my need to get out. She was extremely sweet and comforting to me and told me that I had nothing else to worry about because she had my back 100% and told me to take it easy but make plans for my future and that she'd help me. After that conversation, which lasted about two hours, I felt better, and I decided to listen to her and start moving to figure something out for the next school year. I have a friend who is going to lease a studio next to our future campus. She has a great relationship with her parents, but she has five younger siblings and wants to be more independent, so that's why she decided to move out. I asked her if I could move in with her temporarily and that I would pay her rent as soon as I got a job. She immediately accepted and told me not to worry about rent or anything else until I was in a better position, and we had a good cry together when I told her all about my parents' wedding incident. So this all happened a couple days ago, and I was planning on doing the update then, but my grandma called my parents and my siblings to lecture them about how they were treating me. My brother just sent me a text afterwards with a half-hearted apology, saying that he didn't know I wasn't included and that he just thought I wouldn't have fun on the trip, and then I posted the picture just to create drama. My sister, on the other hand, berated me and told me that I kept trying to make public my own problems and pinning them on my family when they are all innocent. It has been weird with my parents ever since they came back from the trip, and at first they berated me and were furious with me, and after that, we've just been ignoring each other. After my grandma called them, they came into my room, telling me that if I wanted to put this whole issue to rest, I should shut up about it and that this could all have already blown over if only I had kept my mouth shut. I just asked them to leave my room, and then I called my grandma again to tell her what had gone down. She then told me that she and my uncle had bought plane tickets to come down to see me. This was something that I was actually scared about because my grandma's health is not the best and this kind of effort is a lot for her, and I know how complicated it is for her to get on a plane, so I tried to dissuade her from coming and told her everything would be okay, but she wouldn't listen and told me that she was long overdue a conversation with my parents and that she wanted to see me. I'm stressed for her, and I feel again like I forced her to take a long, uncomfortable trip because of me and that maybe I should have dealt with this myself. I do want to see her, and I wish for nothing more than to hug her right now, but I'm worried about her. At least my uncle, mom's older brother, is coming with her, but I hope she doesn't exhaust herself or nothing happens to her because that would break me. They arrive tomorrow and have not informed my parents of their trip, my grandma asked me to keep it until she gets here. I hope she is able to make my parents see the mistake in their actions or, at the very least, help me break the news to them that I'm moving out very soon, and I plan on being in no contact with them. I don't know, I'm worried about her having to do so much for me and bothering her, but I also appreciate and love her so much for doing all this for me. Update 2. My grandma called me to tell me she was coming here to see me and help me out. I was very stressed about it because my grandma has a very hard time traveling, so for her to take this trip meant that she would be under enormous stress, and I felt responsible for her since I was the one that called her. She arrived early Monday morning with my uncle, and I went to get her at the airport. It was a very intense and emotional moment, and as soon as I saw her, I ran to her arms and broke down sobbing. I don't even know if I was able to tell her anything at that moment because of how hard I was crying and I had so many things to say. Thank you for coming, for being so good to me, and for having my back. I'm sorry to have made you take this trip. I feel awful at home. I don't know if my parents love me, but I know you do. I truly was hit with all of this plus the guilt and the anxiety all at once when I saw her, but she held me tight in her arms, telling me everything was going to be okay. My uncle hugged us as well. I don't know how long we stayed like this, but it must have been a while until my uncle told me we should get going. We grabbed a cab and went to their hotel. My grandma had teary eyes, and I could feel her breathing heavily, which scared me, but she kept hugging me and smiling all the way. She had reserved a double room, so I could stay with her for these days, and, once they were settled in and I was more calm, we sat down and I poured everything out for them. The years of neglect and the emotional abuse, how I was feeling miserable after the trip but also for years now, how my parents have been trying to make me feel guilty for all of this that has happened, how I was scared about my future but my end point one priority at the moment now was to move out of that house even at the expense of my schoolwork, how I have made arrangements to move in with my friend and I was looking for a job, and I told them about this post and how some people thought I might be an affair child and that I was beginning to question that as well. It was a lot and I could tell they were both really affected by what I was saying, but they kept comforting me and making me feel safe to open up to them. After I unloaded all my concerns with them, my grandma reassured me that I had nothing to worry about anymore and that she would be here for me always. First of all, she reassured me that I was not an affair child and that both my parents were thrilled when my mother got pregnant with me and that she knew the ultimate dealbreaker for my mom was cheating and she believed it was the same for my father. Apparently the favoritism began showing when I was around 3 to 4 years old, when my parents were constantly complaining about having a young kid in the house and they were bothered because they could take my older siblings to their stuff but not me and I was also very shy and a bit of a crybaby which they had no patience with and made me very different from my siblings. She told me that she knew that my parents had saved more than enough for my college, they're really well off, so that had never been a concern for me until now, thinking they might pull the funds away from me for my education. But that if they tried to not pay for my schooling, she would take care of it, and that she just wouldn't let me drop out because of money concerns. She also told me she would help me with rent and an allowance to move out. She was very generous and I thanked her for it all, but I also told her that this experience had been eye-opening in the sense that I never realized how privileged I had been economically all my life. 
For all their faults, my parents have pampered me money-wise all my life, I went to private school, I have a rather large monthly allowance, I've had a card for years now, and they have never objected to any of my expenses. Seeing the stories here, I realized how good I've had it so far and how being dependable on them all my life made me so exposed to losing everything, and I want to be independent now, not just from my parents but from everyone. I feel like I need to learn to stand up on my own. Writing this and having just read all the stories of people in truly awful situations makes me feel like I've been a spoiled brat all my life, to be honest. She insisted on me accepting my help until I don't need it anymore, and I accepted that, but I'll still look for a job and try to make it out on my own. We relaxed for a while in the hotel because we were all exhausted from the morning, but in the afternoon we grabbed a cab and went to my house. My parents were extremely surprised to see my grandma and uncle with me when I entered the door, but before they could say anything, my grandma told me to go pack all my essentials while they talked to them. I rushed upstairs, and I could hear my grandma and uncle berating my parents for all that they had put me through. At first I also heard my parents trying to defend themselves, but eventually they quieted down. When I came downstairs with two suitcases and my backpack full to the brim with everything important that I had in my room, they were all in the living room. My father was beat red and my mother was sobbing like a child, and when she saw me, she extended her arms in my direction, saying she was sorry, but I just said to save it with the coldest tone I could muster, and my dad said that I didn't have to be a jerk, to which both my uncle and grandma told him to shut up. I left the house at that moment and waited for the cab outside. In the hotel, my grandma reassured me that I wouldn't have to go back to them and that they told her my college tuition was never in question for them and that they had planned to throw me an extravagant birthday party to make up for the wedding mess and were going to be giving me a car as an apology for everything, but my grandma was having none of that because it was pretty obvious to her that they were only trying to save face and they were coming up with this thing on the fly and that a party and a car would not make up for all that they have put me through. Apparently the moment that broke my mother was when she told her that I had even questioned my paternity, and she started crying then, but my grandma told her that what else could they expect when they had excluded me repeatedly from all family events since I was a child? She told me that she would make sure they made the payments to my school unless I preferred to completely cut ties with them and have her pay until I could pay myself, and I asked her to do that. I felt bad because I feel like it's not her responsibility, but I truly don't want anything else from my parents anymore, and although my grandma is pretty well off herself, she's not as wealthy as my parents, but she reassured me that everything is alright and that everything going to me would be taken away from my mom's inheritance. So the next day we went with my friend, her parents, and grandma to the studio where we were planning to move, and immediately upon arriving, my grandma said, I absolutely not. I knew from pictures that the studio was very small and dirty, but we saw water damage and mold in the bathroom and kitchenette, and there was also rust in the little old appliances. I knew all of this beforehand, but I figured I could live with that at least for a while. But the thing that the adults pointed out that actually made me and my friend change our minds was the fact that this studio was street level in a bad neighborhood in a building that didn't seem particularly safe and had bullet holes on the walls, which I didn't even know what those were until my friend's dad pointed it out. So grandma and my friend's parents said they would look for an apartment for us in a better location and they'd help cover the costs. Both my friend and I want to be independent, but we realize that with our most likely minimum wage jobs in such a high demand area we won't be able to find anything better on our own, so the plan is we're going to look for a two-bedroom apartment, and me and my friend are going to pay what we had previously planned for the studio, and her parents and my grandma will cover the difference. I know it is still quite spoiled of me to expect that help from my grandma, but after seeing the studio in person, I truly wouldn't have felt safe there. My friend's parents, who were somewhat aware of what I was going through, told me that I could move in with them until we find a nice apartment, for which I'm extremely grateful since grandma is going back in a couple of days and I've been staying in the hotel with her ever since. Apparently my friend, her parents, and my grandma spoke about this before coming to me to make sure I had some safe place to stay until we moved into the apartment, which is still to be found. I teared up a little as I thanked them, seeing how people were rallying behind me to offer help. Since then I've been moving some of the stuff I had left at my parents and setting my space in my friends. My mom keeps crying and apologizing every time I go back, and even my father has said sorry, but I remain distant and cold towards them. My sister called and said that our mother was a mess and that I was dehead for what I had done, but before she could say anything else, I hung up the phone and blocked her. I was going to block my brother as well when I saw that he had sent me a very long message apologizing again and again for all that he has done to me and for not realizing our parents were treating me so poorly. He says he's been doing a lot of self-reflection on the days since grandma called and realized that he had been in the wrong for assuming I wasn't on the trip because I wouldn't want to go and for just allowing my parents to exclude me for all those years. I sent a brief reply thanking him for his words but telling him I needed space and I was not ready to accept his apology. I feel like he might be genuine because he has never been nasty to me the way my sister has, just aloof towards me but I also feel like I need to keep him away for the moment. Also, keeping a bridge up with my family feels like the right thing to do right now that everything is so fresh. Maybe in the future he will show me he's just as nasty as everyone else, and I'll block him, but as long as he respects my boundaries, I feel better not cutting him off completely. I've also made an appointment with a therapist who specializes in neglected teens, and I have my first preliminary visit next week, again funded by my grandma, which makes me feel ever more eager to find a job ASAP to take the burden off of her, even if she tells me time and time again she is happy to do all of this for me. That's where things stand right now. I don't know if I'll update again, maybe when I start classes or move to the apartment, but right now I'm just trying to enjoy some time with my grandma and my uncle and learn to grow and get rid of these feelings of guilt and depression that have been plaguing me for so long. I want to thank once again all of this community for being so nice and helpful to me and all of you who have messaged me with your own personal stories of getting kicked out or having to learn how to make it on your own at a too early age. You've helped me feel a lot less alone and made me realize that things can get better if I work hard for it.
I feel kind of spoiled for having such an amazing support system for my grandma, my uncles, and my friend, but you all guys are right, reaching out has been the absolute best decision I could have taken, and opening up about my feelings to those who love me, and to all of you internet friends has absolutely saved me, so thank you. Really, I'm more grateful than words can ever tell. Second story. Family demanded I give my kidney to the golden child sister. I, 22F, have little identical twin half-sisters, 16, who both have serious kidney issues. They have both sadly reached a point where, without a kidney transplant, their quality of life will continue to decline, and they might not see the other side of 20. Obviously, myself and my mom are devastated with this news, it wasn't expected that they would be in this position so young. For some background, one of my sisters, Sarah, is very much the tomboy like me, we are really close and enjoy a lot of the same things. We are like two peas in a pod. That's not to say I don't love my other sister, Jade, but we simply aren't as close. She's a little more girly, doesn't have as many shared interests as me and Sarah do, and so we just don't hang out as often. I also don't see Jade as much in general. Sarah doesn't like her dad's wife, and so she spends less time with them, while Jade adores her and has always spent more time at her dad's place, both my mom, their dad, and both of the girls were totally happy with this setup. Jade also begged to go to a particular boarding school, so I don't see her nearly as much as Sarah, nor have I for a very long time. Maybe one weekend a month for the last couple years and some more over summer slash holidays. I still love her dearly, but I hope it's understandable now that I'm just much, much closer with Sarah. We were equally close until Jade started doing her own thing and making choices for herself, and I don't in any way begrudge that. I wouldn't say B and Jade don't get along, but there have definitely been some big spats over the years. We all got tested to see if it would be possible to do live donations, and I'm the only match. Unfortunately, I obviously only have two kidneys. I can only save one of my sisters. There's every chance they might get a kidney from somewhere else, but right now they aren't a priority and aren't high on the transplant list. I basically told my mom, who told their dad, that I want to donate my kidney to Sarah. I thought about it so so much. I know this means I am undeniably saying, I love Sarah more than Jade, and I guess I do. Unsurprisingly, all hell broke loose about how I could do this to Jade, how I could be so cruel, why would I do this, and how I could just play with their lives. I've been getting calls and texts from everyone who knows about this. As far as I know, neither Sarah nor Jade have been told. I get it. I'm playing God here. But it's my kidney. Yeah, I feel like scum for choosing one sister over the other, but one is my best friend and the other is, well, not. I feel like a monster for saying it, and I know on a fundamental level it's wrong. Part of me wanted to flip a coin or something, but I couldn't. My whole family seems to be demonizing me for making this choice. Sorry if it's confusing, the character count cut me off. Edit for some repeated questions. Currently, their doctors can't tell who will deteriorate faster. They are currently at similar stages, and their most recent results have given no insight into whether or not Sarah or Jane will be worse off. Only time will tell, but their current treatments are harsh on their other organs, so there is an element of urgency that makes us reluctant to just wait to see who gets sicker faster. If it came down to Jade needing a kidney next week and Sarah not needing one until next year, I would obviously donate to Jade and hold out hope Sarah will get another donor. I have suggested setting up a donor chain for my mom, but this has all happened recently, so it's still up in the air. I have only been confirmed as a match, and I haven't passed through all of the other checkpoints and testing, there's a very real chance I can't donate at all in the end, which is why I only told my mom and not my sisters about how I felt. To be explicitly clear, as this question comes up a lot, I don't think either deserves to die. Their parents are undeniably advocating for me to choose Jade, who has, and I quote, such a bright future, but they just haven't said it explicitly. I'm not choosing Sarah because she deserves it, I'm choosing Sarah because I want to save her life. Jade has always been, shall we say, unkind to a lot of people, and her dad has always acted like that. If I could save both I would. If I can only save one, and the doctors have no explicit results to say one needs it urgently, I would choose to save the one I love, not just the one I share blood with. I personally think I'm an asshole. I think that if you look past the kudos for trying to donate a kidney, I think I'm doing something wrong, it just isn't enough to make me change how I feel, and I was hoping to get an impartial insight here as I obviously can't get one from my family. Update. To cut a long story short, they both got kidneys, they each got one from the same donor, our family got to meet the family of the donor, and it was really emotional and amazing, and they're both recovering well. However, before that, a lot of stuff went down that I wanted to update you on. There are now understandably massive divides in the family because of how my mom and the girl's dad outright demanded I give my kidney to Jade because she was the golden child with a bright future, while Sarah was just, effectively mediocre. I feel less bad now saying this because she's on the road to recovery, but Jade is slash was a flaming asshole who made Sarah's life hell. I presume Sarah chose to spend most of her time with mom because we were so close, but it was mostly because of how Jade treated her like dirt, and their dad and stepmom thought it was basically Jade's right as the superior being or some bullshit. I ended up not being allowed to donate, but before this, as many suggested, I spoke to my sisters about my decision. Sarah broke down in tears because it was the first time she ever felt somebody put her first. She told me stories of the things that Jade did with their dad's approval and I was livid. She said if she was my choice, she wouldn't feel guilty knowing it might mean Jade won't get a kidney. I made it clear that I chose her because she is good and amazing, and I loved her, not because Jade was a horrible person. I then spoke to Jade and calmly explained that I had to pick, and well, as she knew, we weren't very close, and Sarah was a kindred spirit that I was always with. I wasn't surprised that she was mad, I mean, how else would you react? But I didn't expect her to spew such hate that I'm wasting my kidney. And I'm probably an asshole for it, but I didn't care that she was sick. I effectively said if she hadn't been such a nasty bitch her whole life, maybe she wouldn't be dealing with this, and it's a shame that she might have only learned on what may be her deathbed that she won't always be everyone's favorite and she can't treat her own sister like dirt. I've never simultaneously felt so happy and so guilty for getting something off my chest. 
Due to character count, I can't explain the shit she did, but it's horrific. In any case, about two weeks after that, Jade asked me to come visit her and said she'd thought about what I said. I apologized and explained that I knew about everything she had done, as well as the fact Sarah had already resigned herself to death because she knew the whole family would put Jade first. After many tears, things seem to be okay now, she's slowly mending bridges with Sarah. Sarah will be moving in with me soon, so she can finally have a home where she comes first. Jade said she'd like to visit sometime too. So yeah, all wrapped up. Edit. First, I'm definitely skeptical of Jade's sudden change of heart. I totally respect situations like these can have profound effects on people, but I can't fathom being that horrific to anybody and suddenly being a whole different person when you get caught. I will support her in good faith, but I will do my best to keep my eyes wide open for anything suspicious that makes me think she isn't being sincere. Obviously a lot of people are asking about the things Jade did, and I can't share all of them before of the rules. But when they were still in the same school, things were particularly bad, but the pattern continued when they were at home together. I don't want to talk about everything in detail, but it would be things like taking Sarah's food and calling her fat, Sarah is absolutely not fat. As in, she'd grab Sarah's dinner and throw it in the bin, then proceed to eat her own food. She'd sometimes do this in school as well, so other people started calling her fat. They shared a bedroom, and Jade used to try to deprive Sarah of sleep. Jade would wear your plugs and set alarms randomly. Anytime Jade woke up, she'd just go over and shake Sarah awake, then go back to sleep herself. She'd wait until just before school to go to Sarah's bag and rip up her homework or assignments. Sarah said she mostly stopped doing homework the night before and just did it in between periods where Jade couldn't do it anymore. Some other things would include hiding the tampons and pads at their dad's house. They weren't supposed to go into the master bedroom, and Sarah would be screamed at for stealing their stepmother's tampons. Edit 2, I felt I needed to make this edit to make it clear that kidney failure in general is not a massive death sentence. As I have learned a lot since my original post, there are amazing treatments that can let people suffering from kidney problems have decent quality of life, and I don't want to misconstrue the reality of having kidney problems before I terrify anybody reading this story. My on your deathbed remark was, to call it what it is, very over the top and a result of strong emotions, and I did apologize for being so needlessly dramatic to Jade.